this week on Kentucky Afield. Some things don't always go as planned. Hold on. Especially when searching for adventure. But it often leads to the best memories. Next, we're trying something different on the Ohio River. I'm not sure what it is, but I got one. And introducing women to the outdoors. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Yeah, we got one. Sweet. Yeah, muskrat. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Small mouth, healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good pheasant, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cotton mouse. I like it. What do you think? It's like bowling. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Fishing with a cane pole, a line, and a hook is the most simple form of fishing. But when you take 25 of them and push them in a riverbank, things get exciting. I'll tell you what, there's absolutely nothing that reminds me of my childhood more than what we're about ready to do. Oh, the good old days. So this, this tree here is plumb full of bluegill, and if we can get some bluegill about that long, then that's what we've always had the most luck with yeah. as far as setting limb lines and bank posts, so. Pull it up. There we go, what we got there? Suckers. Suckers and a shiner. There's a lot of little bluegill right here. All right. All right. Look at there. That's what we're looking for. One thing that you gotta remember is this is a arm of the Salt River. So if we happen to accidentally pick up an invasive species, we're gonna be fishing in the river that's only about another 600 yards away. We're not transporting invasive species. Let me make a circle around us here. Now bring it up. There we go. There we go. Don't take many passes like that and we're in business. We're making sure that we're just getting bluegill, chubs, and suckers, and we're we're calling through to get rid of the bass and the what red ear, Chad? Red ear. You know, it is conceivable to accidentally get a crappie, so we got to make sure that any game fish, any fish that there's a limit on in the state of Kentucky, as far as catching, you don't want to have any of that. I prefer bluegill. We got some ch uh, chubs and shiners, but I think it's get it done. What do you think? Yep. Let's get it loaded up. I do have a little aerator. We'll try to keep this as lively as we possibly can. So let's get this up to the truck and uh, make our way to our put-in point. What do you think? Let's do it. Hey, just like old days. Hey, we're here. My back ain't like it was when, mm, I, was a, no. when I was a young man <laughs> 30 years ago. Some of my familiar waters here on the Salt River. Unfortunately, there's no close bank access. This is the area where we usually catch our fish, but this is how you got to put a boat in. This is all a river cane. We just smash it down and back it on in. Getting it out, if it's wet, can be tricky. Come on back. He's going swimming. Mm. You always say some things 
don't always go as planned. <laughs> Normally we just unhook it and manhandle it over the hill, but that's when we were in a boat that wasn't much bigger than a bathtub. Now, 16 foot with a 25 on the back, got away from me. <laughs> This cane pole, believe it or not, is the exact same cane pose that we used to put out 20 years ago. And they're still pretty good. You'll notice that every one of them's tied off, double tied like this. This is done because sometimes when these things start getting a little older, they will break. We've drilled a hole and affixed this onto the secondary point. So we'll put a bait on there, get that thing right down to the water, and then we'll pick up slack to get the bait where it's just barely hanging out. So Jared, run that there in that root wad as good as you can. Bingo, there you go. And adjust that bad boy to where he's up here talking to him. Enough to keep him alive, about like that right there. That's a hog collar <laughs> right there. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. You're allowed 25 limb or bank post sets per person. You gotta have something permanently affixed that's got your name and address and it has to be checked every 24 hours. We're gonna do it quite more frequently than that. Every trip to the river is always an adventure, isn't it? <laughs> always. Nothing ever goes exactly as you explained. Sometimes it's better, but it's always an adventure. We had a little issue putting this boat in today. We went to put it in the water and, you know, there's, there's no boat ramps in this area. The boat got away from us. It's a little bigger boat than we used to run in. But hey, that's part of the adventure, isn't it? <laughs> I enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Man, these catfish in this heat, they feed at night. So it's the reason we get out here and we try to do this. It was 95 degrees today. So it's a little hot to be out here in the middle of the day. So we'll get this set up, go get us a tent site. We may run them here in the middle of the night and we'll definitely be here first thing in the morning. So I'll tell you what, a lot of memories have been made down here. There's four or five of us that used to do this every weekend night that the river would allow us. And you even wrote a song. It meant that much to us. Yeah. I bet you still don't know that song, do you? I might be able to remember a little bit of it. So, um, well, let's hear it. All right, we'll try. You gonna help me sing it? If I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wind is blowing in my mind. I'm going to a place far from here. Back to the old Saw River where I spent my younger years with a catfish on a stringer and a There you go. Oh, wow. Got us a channel cat right off the bat. Our little cane held on. Now, that is about perfect eating size right there. Fiddler magic. Now, the limb shaker. Limb shaker, baby. All right. We got a limb shaker. <laughs> Looky there. Get the grease hot. <laughs> Look at that, hooked by a whisker, literally. When it comes to checking your lines, the shaking limbs are hard to beat for excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go, what do we got this time? Another channel. To my younger days. Got some bobbin going on here. No 20 year old cane pole is holding in there. There you go. What do you think, my friend? Limb shaker, boys. Uh-oh, we got limb a limb shaker. shaker. Chad, I don't know, in all honesty, if we've ever caught this many fish on the first run. Hey, does this bring back some crazy memories? Seriously, I know we keep saying it, but the fact is, this is what it's all about. That's our littlest one of the night. Oh, fish on, fish, fish on. on there. The old canes are breaking, but they're holding. River keep on flowing. Whoa, he came alive. Slapped it for us. There we go, limb shaker, limb boys. Shaker. There we go. That's, that's a that's big a fish. That's a fish right there now. I don't know how that had to be to not get excited when I see that. Yeah, can we go back? 
to our younger days. If this morning is anything at all like last night, well, we're in for a good morning. It's pretty exciting. So last night we put out 50 poles. Every single piece of bait was missing. I don't know how many we got. What's your best guess? I'd say we've got about 20 so far, about at least. 20. We're so excited we didn't get any sleep. Sun's coming up, the birds are chirping. I'm ready to get after them. Let's go see what we can't catch. We got a big limb shaking. I got a limb right here shaking. Double limb shaker. Double limb shaker. There you go. That's a good way to start. Our average size has been a little small, but perfect eating size. If you're doing this to go out and try to catch the biggest catfish of all time, limb line's probably not the way to go. That's gonna be a quicker pass today too, since we're not rebaiting. We're gonna go ahead and, and cut and pull all of our lines. Hopefully they'll have catfish on them like that. I see another limb shaking from here. Yep. So what's this, our fourth one this morning already? Third, fourth? Yep. Got us a little flathead. And this is a, a really small flathead. Now these are great eating. Man, they get really, really big. It's a long-lived fish. We got a cooler full, so I, what do you think? Let him loose. We'll let that joker go. 20 years from now, you may come back and catch that joker. They there live that long. Might be a little more exciting next time. There you go. So we're on the Salt River. Obviously, this is where we was raised. A lot of people don't realize the population of catfish in this river. They know that Taylor's the Lake's plumb full of catfish. This is the river that feeds it, and we're on the bottom side of the lake. You can catch blues, flatheads, and channel cats. And it's uh, loaded. And it's plumb full of them. Loaded with catfish. Catfish, Kentucky bass, smallmouth, crappie. Yeah. When the sauger make the run, when the whites make the run. Chad, we need to do this more often. We worked our butts off getting bait, haven't slept in 24 hours, and I'm not even that tired right now. Yeah, and we've got a double right here. We got one on the limb and one on the log. When we first started doing this, we were probably 14, 15, 16, we got a car. We're looking in somewhere in the neighborhood of, scared to say, 28 years. And look how much life has changed. Boy, this river ain't. It's the same. This is exactly, exactly as I remember, an old muddy salt river. Banks are always slick. The catfish are always biting. For an old muddy river, not too shabby. It's kind of nice to get back to things that don't change, you know? It's the perfect getaway every now and then. Didn't you have to leave our home county? <laughs> and we got a meal. <laughs> Pretty awesome. If you're looking for a new location to go fishing, there could be a place right under your nose. We're fishing at the Falls of the Ohio State Park, but we're at the McAlpin lower gauge. And right now we've got about one foot of water coming out of this upper gate here. And that's a little low, but pools coming up from water being released from these lower dams. Ideally, we're gonna like to see this between about six to nine feet of water coming out of this upper gate, but hopefully we'll find some fish this morning. So you say about nine months out of the year, there's a species of fish that you can come down here and try to catch. It may not always be ideal, but it's definitely worth coming down here if the water's right. You don't know what you're gonna find. At what level do you find it to be pretty much unfishable by walking in? If the gauge height is anything above 17, 17 and a half feet, we're not really gonna have a whole lot of luck wading in here. You will have some boat fishing at that point, but... Um, and today, what is it? Today we're fishing at about 15 with water rising just a little bit here. Okay. So we're gonna be working from about this rock just to maybe about 10 or 15 yards downstream. We're gonna find these fish holding in a little channel right about here. Got a bunch of birds working, which means the bait's here, and that's usually gonna bring the fish in. Those stripers will kind of move in in pods anywhere from maybe three to six fish at a time. They might come here in a quick blitz, and we'll pick up a couple, and then they move out, and then they'll come back in about a half hour later. So to someone who's not used to looking at a river, and I'm used to reading a river, but this, is a, this looks a lot more shallow than I'm used to. You're telling me that right out here where we're looking now, there's fish holding. This isn't a whole lot different than maybe fishing a marsh area up on Cape Cod or something. They're moving in with high water, looking for bait. They're hungry here to feed. Awesome. 
That's really cool. I can only imagine what one's going to feel like when you hook up in this current. It's going to be, it's going to be on. You're going to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have you make a cast and kind of give me a run through. So you were saying that when we go to set the hook, rather than pull the rod up, we're going to use what you call a uh, a strip set. Okay, got you. So it's going to so look just gonna, like this. We're literally going to rip it with our left hand here. So we're retrieving this line, and if we feel a fish, there's your set, just like that. Okay, got you. Of course, you're feeling the bottom all the way down through here. So if it runs with it, obviously you're gonna know. You know how a small mouth will pick up a fly and it's weight at first, and yeah. then you're like, bottom, bottom, fish. Okay, got you. Uh-oh, that blue herring right there looks like he's got him a sauger. He's got good taste in fish. Sometimes the sun will turn these fish off, and sometimes as soon as it hits the water, it'll turn the fish on. All right, got you. we go. I'm not sure what it is, but I got one. That's a drum. Is it a drum? Yeah. Yeah, get him on the reel. <laughs> hey, you know what? Not exactly our targeted species, but we'll take that. Every fish you catch out here in this water on a fly rod in this kind of current, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> So either he missed the bait or accidentally snagged him, huh? Well, they'll come at it. I mean, that water's moving so fast that they may swipe at it and just bump it. And when you set that hook, it ends up up there. And you'll sna end up snagging a few of them, but these guys will get pretty big. There'll be plenty of bait fish out here at the falls. That's pretty cool. Oh, he's got a nice hybrid down there. So yeah, it looks like maybe they're starting to move in. Oh, here we go. <laughs> little feisty sauger here. And these guys are pretty hungry and they'll be feeding on the bottom and they'll eat that too. Usually when you find one of these, you'll find a couple more. So maybe we'll let him go and see if we can find some bigger ones. He wants back in the water. He's got something there. Like oh, maybe a white bass. White bass? White bass, yeah. This fish is healthy and hungry. Pretty lines on him. Well, hopefully he's got some big brothers out there. Here we go. Got him. Oh, he's snagged inside, isn't he? Snagged. It's about two more feet. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Tail slapped and was gone. They're really stacked up thick in there. There's a nice fish, nice fish. There you go. Yeah. What do you think you got there? Like a drum. You got that one there hooked right in the lip. <laughs> nice fish. Not a bad sized drum. He was holding down tight on the bottom. So that's a little bit more what we're looking for out here. These guys will munch on crayfish, clousers, bait fish, but when they're pushing up here, they're probably looking for those shad patterns. Hopefully those bigger guys will start moving in. We'll get him back in the water. What do you think? You want to grab our gear and walk down a little bit, check out another spot? Yeah, that sounds good. Let me grab this pole and we'll make our way. Now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. Hey, this is Justin with your fishing report from the Northeast. Muskie are really turning on. Focus your efforts up in the river area. Bass have really turned on over the last few weeks. Crappie are still biting as well. Try the department place piles from last year and the year before. At Grayson Lake, we are still getting reports of hybrids being caught. Reba has a new hiking trail. That starts in Catawba Park, gives bank access to large amounts of the lake that was accessible before. Anglers are catching sunfish and catfish in this new area. Almost all of the Fins lakes are getting stocked with the last summer catfish stocking. Weight fishing is still going strong in the end of the summer. As the streams begin to clear up, try pulling a rooster tail or a curly tail jig for bass and sunfish. That should do it for us in the Northeast. 
Remember to take a kid fishing next time you go. This is Kevin Fry with your Eastern Area Fisheries Report. Trout lines being used for catfish and small spinners and crankbaits for smallmouth bass. Some recent fish stockings would be channel catfish at Kingdom Come Lake, Harlan County on August 8th, and trout at Paintsville Tailwater for August 16th. Catfishing on reservoirs, mostly having only fair reports and mostly smaller fish. Some larger blue catfish coming from jugs fished in main lake areas at Dewey and Fish Trap Lakes. Cut bait being suspended two to three feet from jugs. Bass fishing reports continue just fair with best success at night with spinner baits and crank baits. During daytime hours, plastics and Carolina rigs getting some deeper fish at Yatesville and Dewey Lakes. This is Marcy Anderson with the fishing report for Southeast Kentucky. On the Cumberland Tailwater, the creel clerks are seeing good numbers of rainbow trout in the 10 to 13 inch range, and 8 to 11 inch brook trout are also being caught. Anglers are having success using spinner baits and silver buddies. Some walleye are also being caught in the tailwater with reports of good catches near the dam at night. Striped bass can also be caught below the dam and also near Winfrey's Rock. On Lake Cumberland, walleyes are being caught on the main lake near the mouths of major creeks and tributaries using bottom bouncers rigged with night carlers and 30 feet of water. Striped bass fishing has been good this summer with fish holding in the upper portion of the lake longer. Currently, stripers can be found between the dam all the way up to Fishing Creek. Elsewhere in the district, Finn's Lakes were stocked with channel catfish the week of August 7th, so check out Brickyard Ponds in Barberville or Logan Hubble Park near Stanford. Good luck and good fishing. The Becoming an Outdoor Woman program here in Kentucky has been going on for over 20 years, and they're coming back September 15th through the 17th. You are supposed to do what as your bow rules? Go Mary Helen with one. One, make friends. Very good. Have fun. Learn something new and share with someone. Well, I did uh, the beginning archery three years ago at Bow decided this year that I would try the advanced. I got a bow for Christmas and so I thought well I'll try it. I want to get into uh, bow hunting not just shooting targets um, and so I thought better to take the advanced archery and learn a little something. This is my third year here. Third year and uh, you really like the pistol part right? I really enjoy the pistol part I do. So as soon as you wrap this class up, you can run up and find out how to process the deer. They're going to actually do that. I took that class as well. Oh, okay. The best class I've ever taken here actually was that uh, cleaning and processing wild game. I thought I was going to pass out, but I did <laughs> not. So Sarah, I just came in and watched you take the meat off of the ham of a deer. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> no, never in my life. <laughs> so you signed up for this class, so it's something you wanted to experience. Uh-huh. And so what do you think about the process? It was incredible. <laughs> I watched someone do it like five years ago, mm -hmm. and I was like, gotta learn how to do that. So are you a hunter? No. <laughs> do you have interest in hunting? Yes. What kind of gun are you shooting? I'm shooting a Lady Smith & Wesson 38. This is a great location, you get some instruction. Absolutely, Eric is an awesome instructor. Every time I come out here, there's something new that I've learned. This is the third time I've taken this pistol class. And I, I take home something that I didn't catch the first time. So it's you can never be overeducated or have too much training. It's been a really good experience. 44 yards. Not bad for my first time. All the skills that you need to become an outdoor woman, you can learn here this, this weekend. And Absolutely. You got a chance to go to a conservation camp and 4-H camp as a kid and after your 11 years, 12 years old, that's it. You're on your own. And so that. you get a chance at bow to learn the things that you didn't get to do at conservation and, and forage camps. Have you ever cleaned a dub before? No. Okay, this so This is the closest I've ever been to a dub. <laughs> that's pretty close. This is pretty personal. So have you ever been dove hunting? I have not. I've never been hunting of any sort. Okay. I'm not a very good whisper walker. Oh, hey, then this is your sport. This is it. So what other class are you taking? Okay, yeah, so archery okay. tomorrow. And Have I'm you ever done that before? No. So this weekend is all new experiences for you. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then Sunday, uh, basic rifles. Okay. Never shot a gun before. You're gonna leave Sunday here. Sunday is the day. You're gonna leave here a changed woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. I'm pumped.
To learn more about this program, go to fw.ky.gov or you can search Becoming an Outdoor Woman on Facebook. Coming up next Saturday night, August the 19th at 8.30 Eastern Time is our annual live non-game call-in show. Get your questions ready now. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.